complex numbers and polynomials. So here we're going to just jump straight into an example. And we want to factorise z to the 4 plus z squared minus 12. So let's, let's go ahead and think about this as an equation reducible to quadratics. So if you like, you could even let x equal z squared, which would imply that x squared equals z to the 4. So we could sub those in. So we could say x squared plus x minus 12. Is it now our quadratic equation? We can look for two numbers that will multiply to negative 12 and add up to 1. And that's going to be plus 4 and minus 3. And we could sub x equals z squared back in. So we get z squared plus 4 all times z squared minus 3. And if we were factorizing over the set of all real numbers, this would be a perfectly acceptable factorization. But if we wanted to factorize over the set of complex numbers, we'd have to keep going because we have an equation with a power of 4, so we're expecting uh, four factors. So what we can do is we can write z squared plus 4 as z squared minus minus 4 and z squared minus 3 we can treat as the difference of two squares and write that as z so taking the square root of z squared will give us z and the square root of 3 is just root 3 and we get z root 3 make one of them a plus and one of them a minus now we can do the same thing with our first bracket so we can say that z and the square root of minus 4 is just the square root of minus 4. z and the square root of minus 4 will make 1 a plus and 1 a minus. And we have z plus root 3, z minus root 3. We can tidy this up still because the square root of minus 4 we can write as 2i. So we're going to have z plus 2i times z minus 2i times z plus root 3 times z minus root 3. And this is our complete factorization of that polynomial over the set of complex numbers. Let's have a look at one more example. So let's say we have p of z equals 2z cubed minus 7z squared plus 10z minus 8. And we wanted to factorize over the set of complex numbers. Now, one thing we can look at, we have a, this is, the leading coefficient is not, is not 1 here. So when we think about a factor that will divide into this polynomial, we need to think that if so it's not going to be in the form x minus a or z minus a. So if a times z minus b is a factor, then p of b over a will equal zero. And this, if we can find at least one factor, this is going to help us uh, factorize uh, this polynomial. Now, the b term in here is going to depend on the 8, the constant term, and the a is going to depend on the leading coefficient of 2. So we need to look for factors of 8 and 2. So the factors of 8 are 1, 2, 4, and 8, and the factors of 2 are just 1 and 2. And if we're looking for values of b over a, we need to look at the combinations of b divided by a. So we've got 1 divided by 1, which is 1, 
So that's, we're going to go through and take all of these and divide them first by 1 and then all of these and divide them by 2. So then we've got 2 divided by 1, which is 2, 4 divided by 4 divided by 1, which is 4, 8 divided by 1, which is 8, and we're looking for plus and minus for all of these. Then we've got them each divided by 2. So we've got 1 divided by 2, 2 divided by 2, 4 divided by 2, which is 2, and 8 divided by 2, which is 4. So we've got a few double ups here, so we can get rid of all those. So there, the terms we're interested in subbing into our polynomial to check for possible factors. So we need to go ahead and start subbing them in until we get one of them where we sub it in and it equals zero. So I've already done it here. And I can tell you that if you sub in two, you'll end up with two times eight minus seven times four plus 20 minus eight. So this is just subbing in two for Z and all of that is gonna equal zero. And that means that Z minus two is a factor. So if Z minus two is a factor in this polynomial, that means if we take this polynomial and divide it by this term, we'll get zero remainder. So we're gonna go ahead and do some long division. So we're gonna get our z minus 2 and we're going to take our polynomial 2z cubed minus 7z squared plus 10z minus 8 so z goes into 2z cubed 2z squared times multiplying it out gives us 2z cubed minus 4z squared doing the subtraction well the first two cancel out minus 7z squared minus minus 4z squared gives us minus 3z squared. We'll bring down our next term. Then how many times does z go into minus 3z squared? That goes in minus 3z times. Then we multiply it out by a divisor. That's going to give us minus 3z squared. And minus 3z times minus 2 gives us plus 6z. We do the subtraction, we're just going to get 10z minus 6z, which is 4z. And how many times does z go into 4z? Well, that goes in 4 times. Bring down our minus 8, multiply it out, so we get 4z minus 8. And doing that subtraction gives us 0 as expected, and we get no remainder. So that means that our polynomial can now be expressed as our divisor multiplied by our quotient. So we've now got P of Z equaling Z minus two, all multiplied by our quotient, which is two Z squared minus three Z plus four. And now we just need to factorize this second term here. And we have a quadratic, a, a non-monic quadratic so what we want to do here is we want to first factorize out the 2. So let's do that. And we'll be left with z squared minus 3 over 2z plus 2. And now we want to go ahead and complete the square. So what we're going to need to do we're going to leave some space inside here so we can complete our square. We have z squared minus 3 on 2z. Now to complete the square we need to half the coefficient and square it. So we're going to add on Half of minus 3 on 2 is minus 3 over 4. 
and we need to square it. We're going to close our bracket, but we're going to leave some space inside our bracket because when we square minus 3 over 4, we get 9 over 16. Then it's going to be multiplied by this 2, which is going to give us 9 over 8 as our constant term for that quadratic. But we need a constant term of 4. So we need to work out what we need to add on here to make sure we end up with a constant term of 4. So we can just do 4 minus 9 over 8, which is 32 over 8 minus 9 over 8, and that gives us 23 over 8. So if we add in this 23 over 8, this will ensure that when we add our two constant terms here, after this one's been times by 2, we get back to 4. So let's keep factorizing. So we get z minus 2, 2 outside of, now we have a perfect square inside this bracket. So we can rewrite this as z minus 3 over 4 all squared, and we still have our plus 23 over 8. We're going to take the 2 all the way outside the bracket. So we get z minus 2. And here we're just left with z minus 3 over 4 all squared. And when we take 2 outside of 23 over 8, we're left with 23 over 16. You could times the 2 out and check, because the 2 over the 16 will simplify to 8 in the denominator. Now we've got 2 outside of z minus 2, outside of z minus 3 over 4 squared. We're going to rewrite 23 over 16 as minus, minus 23 over 16. So now we can write it as the difference of two squares. So we're going to get 2 outside of z minus 2. Outside of, now we just need a square root each of these. So we're going to get z minus 3 over 4. We're going to get the square root of minus 23 over 16. And z minus 3 over 4. And the square root of minus 23 over 16. One being a plus and one being a minus. We can tidy this up. And we're going to get 2 outside of z minus 2, outside of z minus 3 over 4. Now, here we're going to get plus i root 23. So we can take the negative, the square root of negative 1 out as i over 4. So root 16 is just 4. Do something similar over here. So we get z minus 3 over 4 minus i root 23 all over 4 as our final factorization. Thank you.